Okay, so again, for those of you joining us uh, in the post session, in other words, you're just seeing the recording. Again, welcome, I'm Dr. J. DeAnda. Students call me Dr. D.A. And I know that chemistry is not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody likes it. Uh, some people find it extremely boring or kind of like they ask the question and I will actually address it later in the semester. Why do we have to study this stuff? Well, other than because you have to or because they make you do it in your program of study, um, there are some interesting answers to that question. Um, let me start out by telling you a little bit about myself in case you don't know me. I was born in San Francisco. So sorry, Dodgers, Rams, and uh, Lakers fans, but I am a 49er Warriors a Giants fan, sorry about that. And actually, I didn't live there for more than a couple of years. Uh, as a young child, my mother was Puerto Rican and my dad was Mexican American. So I actually grew up in Puerto Rico, went to school there, got married. And right after college and getting married, we moved to the New England area where I did my PhD in biochemistry at MIT. Uh, after a few years of working in that area and doing some research uh, under a grant from the American Cancer Society, I uh, actually left my career for a few years. And I became, of all things, a minister. And for many years, I worked with an international church organization, traveled all over the world. And guys, just... Uh, a great blessing is that I have friends like literally all over the world. I know people all around the world. I've traveled a lot. It has enriched my life beyond belief. Just the, uh, I don't know, the, the wavelength, how it amplifies your, your bandwidth in understanding people from different backgrounds and stuff like that. I love it. I have friends literally all over the world. Um, then after a few years of working in different areas, I worked in the publications industry. I worked uh, managing an investment fund. Uh, then I started teaching part-time. And in 2014, I landed here at Long Beach City College as a full-time professor. And uh, I love it. I love the environment here. Uh, I love my, uh, my colleagues. And I love what I do right now. Uh, guys, I'm not here because I can't find another job or anything like that. I'm here because I love it. I love this feeling that somehow I am contributing to the success of other people. In other words, you, the students, right? And uh, I've had great experiences here, met a lot of very interesting people. I love the diverse community that we serve as a school. And uh, gosh, it, it's, it's amazing. Uh, somebody's asking me if that was my first choice, actually. Uh, it's a long story, but I'll make it short. I started applying for part-time positions in teaching in biology because that actually was my major. And although I'm a biochemist, I felt a little more comfortable after so many years away from science, kind of going back in there. But uh, Cypress College was hiring a chemistry teacher. I threw in my name in the hat and out of the blue, they called me for an interview and they accepted me, believe it or not. See what I'm saying is, you know, things work out. Um, so, you know, ever since I've gotten in touch more with the chemistry side than the bio side of my life, even though I, my first love is always biochemistry. So, uh, yeah, I love, I love teaching. I like it a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm in my mid 60. I'm going to be 65 this year. Uh, I've only been doing this for like eight years full time. So, uh, a lot of people at my age are considering retirement. I see myself as I got to reboot it into a new career and I'm, I'm fired up about it. Uh, you know what, I'm talking too much about myself. Uh, you guys are not here to hear about me. You wanna know about the course, right? So let's go ahead and go to, uh, you know, now that we have a few more people in here, um, let's do another poll. I just did a poll before the recording, but this one is the follow. Let's go to the next one here. Uh, okay. So I'm going to do this one. This is how I'm feeling right now about this class. I'm excited and ready to start. I'm concerned about passing the class. I wish it were over already. I'm confused about how the class will work online. So if you don't mind dropping your uh, answers in there, we'll share it a little bit and have some fun. I don't know that the poll is going to show on the recording, but 
I'll, I'll, I'll read out the results just in case anybody's interested. And we still have a few people. Uh, like I said, we don't have a lot of people here for this session uh, live, but I just love interacting with you. I, I miss, I miss the face-to-face -face teaching and the in-person. Uh, even though I gotta say that doing it online has given a lot of people an opportunity to have, oh, we're done. So here we go, here are the results. So it says here, this is how I'm feeling right about now about the class. The majority of you are uh, either excited to start or concerned about passing the class. And then a few of you are confused about how the class will work online. So it's obvious you probably have not taken a, a class in chemistry online before, but don't worry. Uh, it's going to be good. You guys are going to have a good time. I promise you that. Okay, let me um, close this here and let's do this. Um, let me warn you, my... My home office is kind of far from the Wi-Fi router. And because I have some family members here probably using it also to you know, stream their shows and stuff like that, I'm hoping the connection stays. If we get cut off, just be patient. I'll, I'll get back in there. Also, it might make the audio or the video a little glitchy at times. Uh, it worked free, pretty well for my 5 o'clock class today with Chem 1B. So hopefully it'll hold here. Uh, okay, so let's do this. Uh, first things first. I'm going to uh, share here my screen. And of course, I have it in the wrong place. So the first thing is, this is an online class. And it's what we call asynchronous, which means that with a couple of exceptions, all of your materials are posted and you will access them on your own time and schedule. Like I said, there's a few exceptions. And there's several ways that you can do this. So let's see. One of them is you can go in your homepage, which in my case is Google, and type in LBCC. In, oh, I already have it in here. Instructure.com. And if you click that, it'll take you to the Viking portal, which is the way that students access all their stuff in here. You can also do the same thing by going to our homepage, lbcc.edu. And there is a connection there that's the Viking portal and you can open it there and you log in with your credentials. Or alternatively from that same homepage, there is a link here that says Canvas LMS, see it there on the top left? You can click that and it'll take you to this page where you can log in to your Canvas site. You're gonna log in with your credentials. So, um, hold on a second here. Oh, I messed up, hold on. I should have had a page open already so I can find it. Oops, lost it. Sorry guys. This happens a lot to me. I'm still not as tech savvy as I should be. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can find this thing here. Hold on, give me a second here to find it. And uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so you log in, right, with your uh, credentials. And basically open it up. Oh, sorry, here it is, sorry. Oh, I forgot to So when you log into the portal, right, you get something that looks like this. Uh, what is this? Uh, okay, so I'm getting some blurs here inside the screen. Okay, here we go. So your uh, Canvas dashboard may or may not, probably not look like this because it's different classes, but somewhere in here will be your chemistry class. And there's two sections here, 73948, 73952. Uh, the administration would not let me merge them into one you know, shell. So you click in there and it opens up to your homepage. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I am gonna switch to the student view, which kind of mimics a little better what you see. Now, okay, I'm gonna use the 73948 section, but they're bo they both have exactly the same contents. So this is what your homepage looks like. And hopefully you've kind of scrolled through it and saw the information here and saw the dashboard underneath that 
gives you shortcuts to the different units of content of our class. We have 12 units of content. And let me say this now, in case I forget later, the number of the unit is not necessarily going to match the chapter in the textbook, all right? So be careful about that. Now, if you are not familiar with navigating a lot through Canvas, we have here several possible links. For example, there's an online learning here and a student technology help desk. This one opens up to a separate page and you can access it either from our homepage or directly from here. The student technology help desk. Guys, these people have all kinds of services to help you out, okay? So you can use that. You can also go down here on the left side. This left side here is called the global navigation bar. And over here, there is a help link that will also open up to a lot of resources for you to access either about Canvas, about any technology things, uh, all these kinds of things, all right? So be aware that that's in there. Uh, in terms of us, remember uh, several things. Number one, I want you to look at the syllabus. And there's a link here. And I want us to go through a few things in the syllabus here, but one thing that's important to me is here at the beginning is uh, essentially information about how you communicate with me. I'm gonna give you a piece of advice. The best way to reach me is to use this link on the left here on the global navigation bar called the inbox. Now, because I'm using a mock student view, it's not gonna show right now, but this is a messaging system. And the reason why I like to use it is because I have an app on my phone and it automatically gets the messages there. And therefore I am more likely to respond to messages given through the Canvas system than the other methods, which are the text messaging and the email. Now the text messaging, I will respond. It's also a dedicated text line. It doesn't work for voice, it's only text and it's only for my students. So uh, you can use that one also. Email is a little trickier because I only check my emails maybe like four times a day. And so I'm not likely to respond as quickly that way. Okay, let's go back here to our uh, syllabus. And what I'm gonna do now is I am going to get us back into a different screen here, if you don't mind. I'm gonna take us through a screen that has the syllabus itself. Okay, here it is. It's out of the way. Again, um, you have the option of either using the syllabus as it is on Canvas or downloading this PDF. Now, uh, over the past few years, because of the many different concerns in our society, they have asked us to pack the syllabus with a lot of information. You can see here on the top, if you were to download this, it's gonna be like 14 pages long. Guys, my syllabus used to be like three pages long, two pages of explanations and one of schedule. And now it's like 14 pages long, but I'm sorry about that. Ultimately, it's for your benefit. I need you to really take time to go through this. I'm not gonna give you a quiz or anything like that, like other professors do, no, no. But I want you to look through and check all this information out because most of the questions you have are gonna be in here, all right? Uh, there's a few things that I want you to be uh, aware of. Uh, one of them is here. Uh, I want you to be aware that you are going to need uh, some software here, all right? You're gonna need to be able to do graphs, to access PowerPoint files, and you can use whatever software you want, but ultimately as an LBCC student, you have free access to the Office 365, um, what do you call that, uh, suite of, of a platform of, of different kinds of stuff that you can use. So please uh, take advantage of that if you don't mind. And uh, again, the Student Technology Help Desk can help you do that. You also have to figure out, and here's some explanations here, how to scan or take pictures of handwritten assignments and convert them 
into PDF to the portable document format. So if you're not familiar with that, again, uh, I have several pages in the Canvas that explains how to do that. Or you can always go to the Student Technology Help Desk and have this, those people help you out. Textbook. All right, let's do this. Let me go back here to our, uh, again, I'll come back after the break and look at your questions in the chat because I can't see the chat questions right now. Uh, I wanted to show you here about the textbook. So if you were on the, um, if you notice when you registered, you were signed up for something called the Inclusive Access or First Day Program. So you should have gotten actually charged for access to our e-textbook, which is Nivaldo Tro's Chemistry and Molecular Approach. And it's the fifth edition and it's not showing up right here on my, oh, you know why? Because this is the student view. So it has a hard time seeing it. But over here where it says course materials, that's where you get your book. If you already had the book from a previous course, or if you were able to get the, um, what do you call that? The third or the fourth edition. You know what, guys? Don't throw them away. Opt out of the uh, online textbook that they're putting you on and use the book you have. I have made assurances so that if you have the third or the fourth edition of it, or you have the fifth edition already in hard copy or whatever, you can still do your homework assignments, which are all from the book. So please don't stress, don't say, oh, do I have to get also the one that's online? No, uh, but if you don't have access to the book, this is your cheapest option. I think they're only charging like 30 something dollars for access to this book and you retain access it for, to it for life, just like you would with a normal book that you would buy, okay? Let's go back to our syllabus and look at the last few things I want you to see here. Uh, let's see, here we go. Sorry, let me get this thing out of the way. Please read through here how to navigate through the course. Of course, everybody's concerned about grades. Please read how the grades work, how we communicate. Again, remember, I am going to communicate mainly through the announcements in Canvas. And you should make sure you go to Canvas and you enable notifications. I can show you later on how to do that. Please enable notifications so that you can get the announcements in your email inbox. Uh, if not, please check the announcements daily. Like I said, best way to communicate with me is to the inbox messaging system in Canvas itself but I also have text and I have email. Again, if you want me to respond quickly, the inbox is your best chance. Anything I get before 6 p.m., I respond to it during the day. If I get the messages after 6 p.m., I'll respond by the next morning, usually by eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, beginning next week, we're gonna have student hours and uh, I will post the uh, connection information for them. Uh, let me look, have you look at the last page here on the syllabus. Very important. If you haven't done so already, please look at the dates of our exams. These are the only sessions that are synchronous. In other words, you have to log in on that particular day at that time into your exam interface. All right. If you have any problems, any conflict issues, please let me know ahead of time. I'm able to work out a few accommodations here and there, not everything, but I can help you out. Please don't get discouraged. We can work something out, please. And notice that at the end of the syllabus, there's a schedule of assignments like an at a glance. And it tells you for each week of the semester and date, what are the assignments that are due on that particular day. I'll talk more about that in a few moments, All right? So let me take a little break here to look at your chat box and see if there are any questions here. Um, 
So we're gonna go, uh, yes, I'm gonna show you some examples of lab reports and stuff. Are there time limits on the exams? The answer is yes. I give you two hours to do an exam. Uh, and uh, like I said, they all start on the date and uh, time that is given. If you need any accommodation, you have to ask me and we'll have to work something out. The exams are closed book. I give you a handout with formulas and whatever you need. Um, and then the textbook, yes, if you take 1B with me, you'll use the same textbook uh, next semester. I don't know what the other instructors, what they're using right now, to be honest. Uh, I don't use any monitoring uh, software during the exams. So no proctorial, no respondents, none of that st stuff. Uh, during the exams, I have a Zoom session that I keep open just for people to ask questions. They're not like, you don't, you're not obligated to be in there, but if you wanna ask questions, that's what I'm going to be monitoring during that time. Uh, some of you are asking about exams. Guys, just calm down, okay? Don't stress. We'll deal with exams when the time comes, okay? It's too early to do that. The only thing I need you to do for now is to check your schedule. And if you have a conflict issue, you tell me uh, about three days ahead of the exam date so I can see what I can work out, okay? Cool. All right. Let's go back to our Canvas page. Uh, before we go there, let me tell you a little bit about my philosophy, because I'm going to be talking about assignments in a few moments. And uh, oops, did I lose you guys here? No. Sorry, I thought I had my screen. I got it frozen. This is a very important word. Trust. The word trust basically means the firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Why do I bring that up? Because I want for that to be the word that describes my relationship with you. Okay? I am going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. I'm trusting that you are here because you're trying to pursue academic and professional goals. You're trying to improve yourself as a person and become more competitive in a job market. And so I'm trusting that you are going to give me your best effort, that you're going to be honest, that you're going to be dependable, and that when you tell me things are not working out or you have problems, I'm going to trust in you. I'm not going to question your motivations. I'm not going to try to find out if you're lying or trying to cheat or whatever. That's not me. I'm not a law enforcement agent. I'm going to trust in you in that sense. Okay. So please honor that trust by having a, an approach of integrity to our work and of respect, not only towards me, but towards our subject matter and towards your classmates. At the same time, I'm going to ask that you trust me that everything that I do in this class is to help you advance towards your goals. So please trust me. There are times when you're gonna ask me a question and I am not going to give you the answer straight up. I'm going to make you think and arrive at the answer yourself. At those times, please, uh, you know, just trust me. It's for your, you know, improvement, for your, educational uh, journey, all right? Please trust. Trust is the operating word here in our uh, interaction, all right? Okay, that being said, let's go back to our um, Canvas page. Oh, finally the, the page showed up. So here is our textbook access. So again, if you already have the book in digital or hard copy, or you have the third or fourth edition, you can opt out. Please click here and it'll tell you how to do. Uh, if you don't have the book, please don't go buying it now. You have access here. $31, guys. That's that's a bargain. All right. Very good. Uh, please make sure that you look at the left side here. This is called the course navigation bar. 
these are the main links for you to connect uh, things. So one of the things is, for example, announcements. Like I said, if you go to your account here on the left, there's a link that says notifications. Now, it's not going to work for me now because I'm using a mock student view. But you want to enable notifications so that these announcements show up on your email inbox. Otherwise, please make sure you check this link every day for any announcements, updates, especially when there are assignments due or uh, exams. Every week, I try to put a reminder of you know, things to come, what's happening this week. Now, there are several ways of navigating our course. You know, one of them, of course, is to go here to where it says modules. And modules is the way we organize the contents in our course. Hopefully by now, you already did this before we begin thing, because there's a lot of stuff in there that tells you how to do things. For example, there's one here that says files, and it tells you how to prep your files for upload, how to prepare, uh, what do you expect to have on a lab report? How do you locate your assignments and your data sets? And I'll tell you a little more about that in a moment. That's a very lengthy kind of like page there. Uh, how to do graphs. Now we use Excel for most parts because you have access to that as a LBCC student, but some of you would rather use other graphing software. That's fine, no problem. How to view assignment comments. So there's several things here that you can use, all right? Now, what I've done also is I have another module here called General Course Resources. I have, I just added this today. I had my uh, spring semester students put in suggestions to incoming students. So they're going to give you some tips about, you know, how to do better in the class. LBCC is committed to your success, and we have a bunch of support services. Please go there and find out everything from tech support to mental health to health services, you know, uh, disabled students program, all kinds of things in there to help you out. <clears throat> uh, homework assignments. So essentially, like I said, you are going to use your textbook for your homework assignments, which is one of the categories of assignments that you have. So what you're going to do is find out which edition of the textbook you have. Let's say that you're using the fifth edition, which is the one that's being given to you uh, through this online program. And what you do here is you either download or display this file that tells you what are the problems you're responsible for. So notice that here's homework one, two, three, four. Now, the homework is numbered according to units, not according to book chapters. So notice, for example, when you get to unit four, homework four, there are some questions here from chapter four. So 4.19 means question 19 at the end of chapter four. Question 23 at the end of chapter four, so, 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 so. And then you'll see that some of the questions are actually from chapter five. So you can see here, 5.21, that means question 21 at the end of chapter five. So those are the assignments. Notice that this is for the fifth edition, and these are the only problems that you are responsible for answering. You can answer them digitally, or you can answer them by hand on a piece of paper. Either way, what you will do in the end is either upload the digital file or scan your work into a digital file and upload it. Notice, please read the instructions here about the proper way of formatting your questions. I mean, those that you're gonna be writing out. Very important, for example, that whenever there's calculations involved, you need to show your process, your units, how you did it, and if they're discussion questions, your reasoning, all right? So be aware of that. Now, what does an assignment look like? Well, let's go here to the link that says assignments, and you can show them by the date that they're due, or you can show them by the type of assignment. So we have some discussion questions. We're gonna do some discussion forums. We have lab reports, 
We have the homework, which is the one from the book. We have tests, and that includes both quizzes and exams. The exams are not showing here yet because they're not available yet, okay? So let's look, for example, at a lab report. And uh, well, let me do one. Let's see, we have one that's already available. Uh, so this one here, experiment M. This lab is due tomorrow by midnight. The way you do it is you read, you download the assignment, which in this case is gonna be just worksheets. Notice that even though the assignment is due by tomorrow, it is open until Sunday at midnight. So if you don't get to finish it by tomorrow, that's okay. You still have a few more days to finish and turn it in. And there's no points deducted for that, but please be aware of the following. I'm trying to help you out. I give you deadlines because I feel that that helps you stay on pace so that things don't pile up at the end and then suddenly you have two lab reports and three homeworks and whatever all piled into one day. And that is not good for you. So again, I give you some, you know, a window of time to finish the assignment, but I strongly recommend you follow the deadlines because it'll help you stay on pace and it'll help your brain process the information better. All right. So are we clear on that? Cool. All right. Let's go back here again. Now, to help you out, the other thought, and then for example, let's say this expert, this was a thing you're gonna be turning in. So you will click start the assignment when you're ready, upload your answers. And then what you'll do is down here at the bottom, there's a place to upload your file. Canvas gives you other options that other instructors use, but I am not, uh, I have not enabled that. So you will have to upload your file. Remember that. Uh, if you read the instructions, your file must be PDF or doc or docx format. In some cases, you'll also be able to upload an Excel file. Please do not try to upload JPEGs or PNGs or you know image files because what's going to happen is that Canvas is going to have a really hard time displaying those on my end so I can grade them. Understand? All right. Now, in some cases, for example, in some of the lab reports you're gonna do, and again, I'm gonna leave here. Yeah, I don't need to change anything here. Now, right now you cannot see it, but for example, uh, you're gonna have an experiment here called the melting point. Uh, right now it's not available, this is for next week. But what you're gonna do there is you're gonna watch a few videos. And you know what I'm gonna do? Let me leave the student view for a moment here so I can show it to you. And uh, this is now, you're seeing my view, my professor view. So this is experiment one, this is the melting point. This is a property that we're gonna study in class. It's, called, it's a physical property as we'll learn, what, we'll learn what that means. And as you can see, there's gonna be a material to, document to download, some documents to download. There's gonna be a couple of videos explaining how the procedures work, a video explaining how you analyze it. Now what's gonna happen is you're going to receive a data set that will have data as if you had done the experiment. <clears throat> so all you're gonna do is analyze it. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna go here back to the student view. So for this experiment, what you're gonna do is on the left side here on the course navigation bar, you go to the grades and it's gonna display all the different assignments that are in here. And I don't know what this SLO assessment is. In there, honestly, I honestly don't know why that's in there, but anyway, sometimes the uh, university puts things into my own Canvas site. I hate that in intrusiveness, and then I don't even know where it came from. Um, so let's say, for example, over here you had that experiment, which was experiment one melting point. Notice that in your page on the right side of that bar, there's going to be a little symbol here, like a comment symbol. So if you open that. What you're gonna see is, look at the message from Dr. Dia. Hello, here is your data set to complete this activity. Enjoy. And then there's a file and you're gonna download that file. All right? That's how you get your assignment, your data sets for labs. 
I'm going to show you a little bit. Uh, there's a few lives that are going to be different this semester. I'll show you that in a moment. So what does that look like? Well, let's do this. Let me uh, share uh, so I can show you what that looks like. Uh, here is here is a data set for that experiment. So this is what the student would have got. It has like a data sheet with some filled in information. And again, at the time that you study this, you'll know what this means. These are temperatures at which the substance or the mixture melt, melted and the freezing point for that substance. And then there's some blank parts because that's the part that you are gonna analyze and come up with the answer. Your goal is to identify what was the, uh, what compound was there. You had three choices, benzoic acid, succinamide, and you also had another compound called transtilbene. So you had to determine based on the data, which of the three compounds was your unknown. That's, that's all it is for this experiment, all right? <laughs> so let's go back to our Canvas page. Okay, so that is how you find your unknowns. And once you get to that lab, so you'll have a chance again to write down your stuff and upload your results. If you have problems with technical stuff, like uploading files and that kind of thing, I'll probably, if you ask me, I will probably refer you to the uh, this thing, the Student Technology Help Desk. Again, I'm going to put it again because they can help you a lot better. And they have, you know, online, they have uh, actual, you know, um, what do you call it? Chat, you can chat with the team there and they can help you sort through all kinds of technology issues that, you know, I might be able to help you out, but I might not be the best source of help for those kind of things. All right. Okay, another type of assignment that you're gonna have, this is a lot of fun, uh, is discussions. So we have a discussion forum here in Canvas. It's called the Quantum Cafe. And it is open. In other words, you are allowed to go in there and start a discussion thread on your own if you want. You can use it to set up study groups. Uh, there are a few things here. I only have a few posted right now because there's some that are still, this is still at work. But for example, this week you'll go in here and the Quantum Cafe has an activity called Getting to Know You. This is going to be a chance for you to share a little bit about yourself, a brief personal bio. And then once you've posted it afterwards, all of the, once you post your student, your uh, classmates, excuse me, will be able to see what you posted. And then part of the activity is for you to respond, to kind of comment on, <coughs> excuse me, your classmates' posts. So you'll pick two other students to respond to, and you'll have the rest of the week to do that, all right? Uh, in all of these uh, items, please follow the rules of netiquette. In other words, please refrain from any kind of offensive language Please respect one another. And again, be mindful of what kinds of information you share personally. All right. I'm just trying to keep it safe. Okay. That being said, I know that some students are concerned. Okay. Why would I start a discussion thread in a place where the professor has, uh, you know, he can see what I'm writing? <laughs> it's kind of like, I know you guys would like some privacy. You know, in that case, I encourage students to start their own Discord or use any other platforms for discussion forums. That's fine. I'm not going to be looking around for what you write. I do want you to feel that, uh, you know, you can talk to each other and build great friendships without my intrusion, without feeling like I'm a big brother is watching you, you know. So that's fine. But like I, what I was saying is that the uh, Quantum Cafe, that discussion board is for you, it's for students. And I only have, you're only going to have, I think about six, I think it's about six activities that you're going to be required to contribute to. Some of them are going to be, you're going to be working in groups and some of them are going to be individual. Okay, let's go back to our page here. And again, I keep getting this. I don't know if it's showing on your end. There's this bar that shows up here. Kind of, uh, it's like a shadow in front of this thing here. Okay, anyway. So let me check here for a moment, make sure I cover everything. I wanna start wrapping it up here over the next 10 minutes. 
And okay, so the last thing I wanted to share, like I said, all of this stuff is in Canvas already. If you guys were able to look through that before we begin, and also that general course resources. Um, again, what you'll do is you have two ways of navigating the course. Uh, for your benefit, I've put this week one, week so activities by week. And so what I do is I give you a suggested plan of study for each one of those, all right? And this is what it looks like. Let me uh, show you what it looks like. This is the week one study plan. And like it says, it's a suggested plan. It's a suggested plan. So for example, if you started early, you would have seen that for week one, I had a few things for you guys to do, including for example, oh yes, beginning to read the chapter one of the textbook and something called the lab safety simulation, which I'm gonna talk about in a few moments. Like I said, this is a suggested guide. It will tell you what assignments are due. For example, it says here, the lab safety simulation is due by tomorrow. Uh, Experiment M, which is a worksheet on how to do measurements and deal with digits and stuff like that, that's by Wednesday. But like I said, it's open until Sunday. You, can, you have the rest of the week to work on it. But it also tells you, it gives you a little bit of a suggested pace of what you should be doing. So for example, if I were you today, I would have been doing all these things here, you know, start unit one videos, watch these videos here and look at that quantum cafe assignment that I just showed you. Tomorrow you would finish unit one, start working on this lab. And, you know, I strongly recommend that you download these suggested study plans and follow them. Uh, this is built on experience and, uh, you know, years of experience with my students, what works for them, what doesn't work. So I strongly recommend that you follow this. Okay, let's go back to our thing here. Okay, so this is our study plan. Uh, this is an introduction to the course. This is an old recording. So tomorrow or by Wednesday morning, I'll replace this with the one that I'm doing right now, right? Uh, you have here an introduction to the first unit, which will cover essentially between uh, today and Wednesday. So by the end of this week, you should already be covering unit number two, which is atoms and elements. We have lecture videos. Like I said, everything is asynchronous. So you can watch this on your own time. You can, uh, you know, stop and pause and go get a sandwich, come back, you know, whatever you want uh, at your own pace. And then what we'll have is, as you can see, we're gonna jump right into unit two. And then the same thing again, here's some videos, some lecture videos. I'm going very fast with this because you should be able to do this. There's some videos here related to lab stuff. Uh, here are some lab safety videos. If you wanna do that, uh, these are very long and convoluted. I give you a little practice uh, exercise. You're gonna see it uh, in a moment. These are some other assignments. Uh, for example, this one is due by next week, September 7th, but I would start working on it this week. It's gonna uh, help you kind of clear the cobwebs on how to do graphs. All right. And then this is homework one, which is again, homework one is chapter one of the book, but after chapter four, uh, unit four, it starts changing. Here is homework number two. So let me go back here to the modules because it's getting a little confusing here. So essentially what I'm saying is that uh, you can navigate week by week. And what I'll do is every week I will collapse this and I will roll up the, the, that week's activities up to the top Please take advantage of something that I call philosophy appetizers. My students love this. These are essentially little talks that I give you on general wisdom. You know, I tell you stories. Sometimes it has to do with science and even chemistry. Sometimes it has nothing to do with it. A lot of it has to do with uh, sharing from my experiences, my views of life. And sometimes they will become the basis for some of their discussion assignments. I hope. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, now here's, uh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong place here, hold on. 
Let me go back here. Now, here is something that has been added this semester that was not there before. And that is that uh, thanks to the schools getting uh, some kind of like a, a grant, we have been able to get for free something called the Laster Simulations Platform. Hold on a second, let me get out of here so you can see it. Now this might take a little while, I don't know how my internet is doing right now, but if you were looking, there was an activity that was due right now and it's called the Lab Safe, oh, I'm sorry, that's not it. Where is it? Okay, I lost it here. Oh, because I was in week two. Okay, here we go, lab safety. So what this is, is an assignment that's an actual simulation. You're gonna load it and it's gonna look like this. And it's all like virtual simulation. You're going to essentially walk through a lab. You're gonna be asked to put on a lab coat, put on gloves, put on goggles. You're gonna look at different things. This first activity is just a simulation on practicing lab safety. And you'll do it, it is for grade. Uh, the cool thing about this thing is that if you get stuck, you can go back to the previous safe point. Uh, apparently you can resume it at any time. So I still haven't decided uh, how I'm gonna grade it. If I'm gonna go with whatever the grade is that the system gives you or just by completion, I haven't decided yet uh, because I'm just using this for the first time this semester. I did a pilot program on it in the summer with my uh, summer class as an extra credit assignment and the students loved it. I was concerned about compatibility, but apparently other than a few times the things slowing down or getting stuck, uh, nobody's computer burned, <laughs> nobody overheated. Uh, it is not an easy type of thing to do on your phone, on your smartphone. It's better to use a computer, but this semester the campus is open, right? You guys know that, right? So you can actually go on campus. There's some protocols you have to follow and they're all on your homepage of lbcc.edu. There's a return to school page and it gives you all the protocols you have to follow, but uh, if you're willing to put up with the uh, annoyance, you know, you're showing your vaccination or your negative tests, COVID test, or doing your health screening and wearing a mask and all that kind of stuff, uh, the computer labs are open and the Science Success Center is open and they have computers in there. If you want, you can go there to do these specific assignments. All right. So I uh, just want to let you know there's going to be about three of these simulations. Uh, in the course. And then I think I'm going to use one or two more for extra credit assignments. So we can talk about that more a little later. Okay, let me do this. I'm going to wrap it up now because I promised uh, this would be under an hour. I'm already running on the eight o'clock mark. So let me quickly here open the chat and see if there are any questions. Uh, hold on. Oh, here. Okay. So let's see, where did I leave it on? Okay, so I already showed you how the homework works. Uh, is Google Sheets an accepted alternative to Excel? Yes, except that you will have to print the graphs to a PDF in order to upload them. Uh, any questions you have on exams, please don't stress out. I'm not going to answer any questions right now because that's still a couple weeks away. So I'll give you plenty of information and instructions about exams when the time comes. Uh, if you have conflicts on the exam days, please work it out with me personally because there's different ways we can deal with it. All right. Okay. Um, somebody's asking about Chem 1B or Chem 1A. To graduate, uh, I honestly would ask your counselor about that uh, because a lot of it depends on which program, which transfer program you're on, uh, whether it's the IGETC or the other one. So it depends. Uh, and also whether you're going in a, which direction you're going, science or health, it all depends. All right. 
then uh what's another question somebody had here uh uh let's see quizzes no quizzes are not via zoom quizzes are all same asynchronous uh again the uh like i said i don't have an answer yet to how we're gonna grade those things that are simulations lab simulations uh so i'm gonna see how the first one goes and i'll take it from there right uh, lab safety, if you're not comfortable starting the simulation, just go and watch the videos that I posted. I have like three pretty comprehensive videos on lab safety <clears throat> that should kind of get you going. All right. I think some of us have, uh, some of you already have a Discord set up, so you'll be able to access that. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, how will we know what chapters to read? Well, the chapters, like I said, you see the unit. Let's say unit three is compounds and uh, that kind of stuff. So that'll be chapter three. Unit four is chemical reactions. You can see in the homework that if you're on the fifth edition of TRO, that's going to cover chapters four and five. So I am going to let you guys kind of work uh, through all that, all right? Let's see, any other questions? Uh, I told you about my suggestive plan of studies. By the way, um, let me go back to our share screen here. Um, there is no obligation for you to navigate week to week, if you're just trying to find the uh, lecture, the PowerPoint notes. So you can go back to our homepage if you want. And I'm gonna put, just put us in there again. Here is the homepage. And at the bottom of the homepage, there's a dashboard and you can use it to access If, For example, you need to find, oh, I, I need to see the PowerPoint on compounds, but I forgot what week that was. No, you can come back here and that'll take you directly to a module that has just the stuff, the stuff for compounds. Now, just so you know, oh, what happened here? the PowerPoint notes that you get are different than, well, let me show you what they look like. So for example, when I'm doing my lecture, you're gonna have a, I'm gonna use a PowerPoint for my lecture videos. The version that you download looks like this. It's more like a fill the blanks version. All right, you can see it here. Now, it's just a few short blanks. Uh, I've learned that it helps students if they actually go through and fill in the blanks in terms of retention. That's the only reason I do it. I use a lot of materials that are copyrighted, which is why I cannot give you the full set of PowerPoint notes because sometimes I have in their videos and images that are copyrighted. And if I were in a face-to-face -face classroom, I'd be able to use them. But because this is published, I cannot. So you get the next best thing, which is a set that has little blanks in them, just short blanks. You can either use Notability or use download the PowerPoint itself and write on it, or you can print it and write it by hand. You know, whatever works for you. Uh, remember, you can always pause the videos or run them at double speed if you want to go a little quicker. Uh, let me, uh, one thing I got to share with you, because I guess many of you don't know me, uh, last summer, you know, 2020, I had a nerve injury that has kind of kept me, that's why I'm sitting on an ergonomic chair here. Um, it has kept me from updating some of our materials. So that means that you're going to be stuck with some lectures that are from spring of 2020. Hey, I'm sorry. I just... Uh, have not been able to go back and edit or re-record those. A lot of stuff I've been able to re-record. Same thing goes for some of the labs. Some of the stuff is kind of like recorded in a, in a, with a sketchy camera. They don't look very sharp. But uh, please, I apologize. Please forgive me for that. I try my best. 
to me, what's important is to interact with you guys now and to be able to take your questions. So I want to stay healthy for that, as opposed to spending, you know, hours editing and post editing and re-recording videos, which would really not be good for my back or my neck and my, my nerve injury. So please, I apologize for that and I'm sorry. Okay, let me go back to the chat here. Uh, somebody's asking about Zoom meetings. We don't have any more lectures on Zoom. There's no more lectures on Zoom. I will have office times and uh, those will be posted uh, later because we'll start next week. So I will have that. Now, here's what I'm thinking, just so you know. This semester, uh, for the first time in a couple of years, I don't have a supplemental instruction program. So I used to have a great student, Alexa, who was uh, not, not the program, Alexa, a real Alexa, a real one. Uh, she was excellent and she was very tech savvy and students really loved her, but uh, she transferred and uh, I don't have anybody this semester. So one of the things that I'm thinking is that once I start my office times, I may make one of those office times kind of like a supplemental instruction session where I'll have practice problems. So if you want to come in, I'll give you some practice problems. We can work on them together. And, uh, you know, you can ask me questions and stuff like that. So that, that's something that I'm thinking. I think I have, uh, I'm supposed to talk to my doctor this week. Let me see if that's something I can do. I think I should be able to do it as long as I stay like, in a, you know, ergonomic, ergonomically correct position and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I uh, realize that our tools for online teaching have gotten better than they were a year and a half ago. So, you know, I, I think I can do things a little better than I did before. Okay, now uh, this is it for now. I'm going to stop the recording.